Well, I, uh, I have a feeling after like 40 years of uh, creation, artistic creation and this art and design, I have the feeling that uh, uh, we, we have discovered a new world, you know, like uh, the Spanish uh, explorer in the 14th century discovered, you know, South America and the whole, the whole planet by navigation. But we are uh, a bit, for me, in the same position. Uh, we don't have boats, but we have uh, the technology now to immerse ourselves in a new kind of space. But that space, we have no idea what it is. Right now, um, uh, the gaming industry is trying to invite us in immersive space and interactive space where we'll kill each other. For me, this is, this is not what this space is about. Uh, this space has to be invented, it has to be uh, imagined. And uh, so our task as artists and designer and architect of today is to, is to uh, inhabit this world and build it, but build it with the, with the, um, the ethics and the aesthetics that are important to us. Like digital humanism is the team this year. I think this new world that we're investing now, digital world, immersive, interactive, has to be designed with uh, humanism in mind. Not, it's not about business, it's not about marketing, it's not about war. It has to be about how can we express our humanity. But of course, the world, this world is, is created by computers. So the big challenge for us humans is how we will engage with computers and keep our humanity and keep uh, computers where they should be, you know, not let them invade completely our imagination, but, but define their position to help us imagine the world that we need. And of course, this world is not designed for humans, I it's designed for life. It's not just us, it's the, the all the living realm, you know, the plants, the animals, and uh, we have to change our mindset. So this new world is an opportunity to become more generous and more open and more understanding of the process that are happening around us. Yeah, because the technology is very powerful. It does not come from nowhere. It's invented by humans. We invent technology, but we invent technology for the, uh, sometimes the wrong reasons. Usually you invent technology for war, you know, war and military and, uh, and uh, this is the, the incentive for having technology. But uh, the artists uh, are there to, um, to, uh, to, uh, to use this technology, which is uh, neutral. I mean, it, it can be, even if it's designed for war, uh, it can be used for good things. So uh, artists will sometimes repurpose technology, uh, transform it, uh, change the reason why it was created into something else. And this is why the, the, uh, the artists have to be very critical about technology. But I see in my own lifetime, you know, technology was really fascinating at the beginning. You know, the interactive laser disc. Oh wow, the computer laser disc can hold uh, thousands of images and video, and you can shuffle them. So it was breaking the linearity of cinema, which was fascinating. So we did not, we were not so critical about it. We were just like eager to try and find out what we can do with it. And I could use it to do portraits, interactive portraits, but. Um, Fortunately, that took me through several cycles of creation, but I became more critical about, uh, about technology as I mastered uh, the technology and as I saw its effect. And now I think after like 40 years, I look at new technology and um, I have uh, more question about it than I had before because perhaps I'm starting to see how this, this uh, uh, cohabitation between human and technology can be uh, difficult or dangerous or, or even counter uh, human if you want. Yeah, well the portrait run is a very important work for me because you never know when you have an idea, you make it, uh, bring it to life and it's not exactly what you imagine but it's something else. But when you show it to people, people pe then you can, you can really uh, see what you have done. And in the case of Portrait One, it created a lot of interest. That was a big uh, incentive for me to, uh, it facilitated uh, you know, my career a lot. But um, Portrait One, I, I see the, m the measure of its success, it, it's when it copied, it's copied, you know? 
like it was i guess one of the first uh, if not the first uh, visual you know chatbot uh, you had other programs that were uh, where human uh, converse with the computer but they were text you know they were uh, they were not visual so that was an example but it it it, it triggered uh, interest and then you could see it happen and i'm really happy to see that how people inspi fi in are inspired by art they and they copy it and they repurpose it and they do other things with it so now the the work has inspired many things that uh, that i think is is a measure of the good idea that this was very naively very intuitively but this is you always hope that you will reproduce that. So I saw my first panorama when I was 14 years old at Expo 67. And it was, uh, it was a universal exhibition and it was a, a trip through Canada. But uh, you, know, you could feel that uh, although it was just a, a, a cylindrical panorama, you could lose your balance. So you had in the room, you could ha hold on uh, handrails not to fall. And when I was 14, when I saw that, I said, oh, this is my, in my lifetime, you will see many, many immersive you know, panorama and everything. But it didn't happen uh, because I did not know then. It was, they were so complicated and expensive to produce. So in my lifetime, I, I was always looking for a way to, to create these immersive panorama. And it, it happened uh, only uh, thir 30, 20 years later, you know, 30 years later, because you needed the processing power the computer you needed the way to record the media on a, a very flexible and fast um, format you needed uh, the ideas to produce uh, you needed the real time that computer could afford you needed also the society to evolve to want interaction and immersion so all this happened at the end of the 90s and now you have vr you have domes you have all kinds of things so when you do these research exper experimentation you don't know if it will give a result or not but if you have the feeling that you the intuition that maybe there's something there you have the responsibility to try it because maybe then you will spark something uh, in somebody's mind and they will become you know very they will take the idea and bring it much further it will be yeah it will be 30 years next year so I, i'm dreaming to ma remake it with the same actress who is now 64. She was 34 at the time. She's 64, Marie. Uh, and, uh, and see how she has evolved as a character. It's not about her, it's about the character. But now with AI, it's really incredible how you could uh, work on, on, on defining a, person a generative personality. Maybe she can uh, now remember that she saw you before she can make sense differently of what you tell her so the possibilities are so open but of course we don't have millions of dollars to do these projects so it has to be minimal but it has to be critical at the same time of ai and all the technology it was a big accident for me it's it was something i wish i had not uh, experienced but uh this is life, you know. Sometimes you are at in one place, something happens, and you have you're a witness. So uh, the, the 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 little story about this is: we were a group of artists in New York for an event organized by the Quebec government to showcase art from Quebec in New York City, and uh, we were uh, maybe 30 artists were preparing our installations uh, for an opening on September 13. We were at, uh, you know, the kitchen, we were at Numbo, we were... Uh, at first we were supposed to have installation even in the World Trade Center at the ground floor. But security was so difficult that we decided that it was too complicated. But we did find an apartment to, to, to stay because we spent one month in New York in Battery Park City. So we were just in that day, this the morning of September 11, we were uh, just about to go and install our uh, first panoscope, you know, the, the, the infrared dome at the kitchen. And suddenly uh, we hear a noise. We were like pouring coffee on the 20th floor of that building. We hear a noise and we say, oh, what's this noise? Uh, about quarter to nine. And uh, we said, oh, it it's looks like a big garbage truck has been hitting our building or something. So uh, we said, okay, well, that doesn't seem to be that that um, that uh, 
difficult. So we kept on drinking coffee. And then somebody looked at the window and she saw hundreds of people on the street looking in, in the direction that we couldn't see. So we said, okay, let's go down and check it out. Maybe it's connected to the sound we heard. So, and I had prepared my camera this day because we were shooting the, the, the installation uh, of the first time we installed a thing. So I take my camera and I had a cassette and put it there and we go around the corner and we see the first tower in flame. So, wow, that was spectacular. So I started to, to record and I was using the zoom to, to go because we were not that far, but maybe like three blocks south. So I was zooming in to try to understand what was happening, you know. And you could see when you zoom in that the, the sum of the, the structure was a bit, uh, uh, a bit uh, 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 distorted. And, uh, and then some my friend I said, oh, look, there are people jumping. And so I, I was basically, uh, we were like trying to make sense of that. But for us, it was maybe an explosion. But we see the, 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 pol the policemen and the fire uh, uh, firemen arriving and say, okay, they will go up and they will kill the fire. And, the, and we were just about, you know, going about to leave. I had zoomed out, the camera was holding it like that, talking with my friend, and suddenly we hear a sound <laughs> like this, and uh, the pl there was a plane, and it took a while to realize, you know, what's that? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, like, and then we realized it, you know, uh, that another plane had it, and then suddenly from an accident it became uh, a terrorist act, and, and that was a completely different story. So I, I look at the camera, I zoom out, I see that I recorded the plane. So I take a set, put it in my pocket and say, okay, if I, if I see media, I will <laughs> give it to them. Uh, but we were on the street, there were no media around. We were, we were trapped in, in, in a section of New York and eventually we were taken by boat across to New Jersey. But that was my story. And th that story, in fact, is, is, uh, is very unfortunate because I was not, uh, it, it we had to cancel the exhibitions. It, it was a big stop in my, in, my, in my momentum, this thing, because suddenly, not just for me, for the whole world, actually, uh, the whole world stopped that day. And we're still, you know, uh, 10, 15, uh, almost 20 years after, trying to understand what happened, and we don't know. We know the world changed a lot, and I was there on the street that day with my camera to record it. Yeah. When I came back to Montreal a few days later, there was a music performance in our art center in Montreal where a friend was playing a, s a piece of music by Charles uh, Ives, The Unanswered Question. And for me, when I listened to that, that, uh, that music, it was the complete opposite of what I, my experience was on the street. So I simply had the idea to put some of the video I had with that music together just to see what happens and it's a installation that i showed once in our center called untitled and i have never shown it after that yeah. there has to be because art is about citizenship is about you know uh, uh generosity is about understanding the world and the world th that we live in needs to be, um, you know, to be um, collectively designed and in inhabited and uh, evolved. So we have a responsibility, not only as artists, as human, as citizen. So and politics is part of that. So the every decision we make, what we wear in the morning, what we buy, you know, if you buy something, basically you support a company, a product, or you so the decision of what to buy or what not to buy. You know, now we, we're talking a lot about the necessity to reduce our uh, carbon footprint. But, you know, we're very pleased to have flu flown to Colombia and be here with you. But maybe there will come a point where we have to be very critical about that. Say is do I have to go? If I what, what is the environmental cost of me going there? And, and is my presence there is... Um, uh, is there another way to uh, to avoid this uh, environmental cost but still participate? So we need to be global, we need to interact more and more together, but we need to be uh, careful on, on, on the costs of the, of, of the environmental costs of all these actions. So this is a very interesting design opportunity. How do we travel slowly? So maybe instead of coming to Colombia for four days, like now, I should come for a year and come maybe 
uh, by boat or by bicycle and uh, and use the the time i have here to go deeper in society you know uh, get involved in things so that would be a way to stay connected but differently in a way that is more sustainable so i really like from personally the slow food uh, the movement of people who say okay uh it's not about progress you know growth it's about how to keep our values in line uh, and uh, be more responsible in how we uh, we consume energy uh, but without sacrificing what we need to uh, to do is work together get to know each other break the frontiers break the barriers uh, invite each other but invite each other differently in a in a slower pace and uh, and sort of uh, get more out of it Well, the first thing is the um, is the people, the 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 way that you are greeted, uh, the uh, the you feel welcome. You feel that um, uh, what you bring here is something that people are interested in, and uh, there are so many opportunities to share. Of course, when you are uh, in the stage, you don't see the audience, but you, c you feel something. But after that you know in the cocktail or the uh, exhibition or on the street uh on the uh, in the bus you you have these beautiful conversations these moments and all this the symposium the festival is everything together of course the for me uh, the the new the new dimension of south america and of um, of colombia is you know of course when you hear about colombia from canada it's you know it's the problems that you had with the FARC and uh, and all this, and the the media. In fact, you realize the media is basically is a spectacle. You know, it creates the news. It needs news, and you d you know about foreign country from the news, and the news are a very limited part. But when you come here, you say, oh, this is a a real country, country with people, happy people. You know, food, fantastic fruits that you have never seen before, coffee, and suddenly you realize that. The the multidimensionality of this is the news, the media that we have to understand Colombia is not giving you the sense of what this society is. When you come here, you you discover a cr incredible rich society. That's what I like about it. You're welcome. <laughs>